Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your Master of Fun and Wonder, your Viceroy of Verisimilitude, with another John Campia Show mailbag. As you know, if you watch the show live, you can fire in Super Chats for a very short period of time, and we will we will answer them live on screen. But if you don't want to do that, our operators are standing by 24-7, seven, seven days a week, right at the link down below. You can send us a tip, and if we deem it appropriate, we will read it on a mailbag. Like, I will read Roy's tip right now. Roy. Roy says, hey, John and gang, I'm going to Vancouver this Thursday. The town, well, Vancouver is where I began my illustrious drinking career, because you could go there. I lived in Seattle. Three hours away was Vancouver, and when you turned 18... You could drink there. In 1987, I went and saw the Joshua Tree Tour, YouTube, you, not YouTube, U2, in Vancouver. I went to the uh, World's Fair in 86, where I first saw Show Scan. It's my first time going to Canada, says Roy. I'm going for a wedding and will be there until Sunday. Do you have any suggestions or places to visit? Thanks for all that you do for us and entertainment. Well, I'll tell you this. If you want to, here's a, okay. I'm going to tell you an industry secret. Do not tell this to anyone. If you want to see celebs, go to the bar at the Sutton Place Hotel. Go uh, in the evening. But don't tell anyone you're going and be cool when you get there. If you see somebody you know, don't walk up and be like, oh, hello, I love your work. Just be cool. Walk up and saunter up. Hey there, I just want you to know I really love your work. Do that. The Sutton Place. By the way, don't tell anyone I was the one who sent you there. Don't. Anyway, I mean, we'll see. What does it all mean? I don't know. Crazy Joe sends in a tip and says, Hey, John, just curious. If I start a new website called Gus's Gas Station and Movie Reviews dot fart, would you be supportive or sue the pants off me asking for a friend. Now, I can't speak for John. I can speak for me, and I can say that that would honor us. And I think that um, as long as you credit us on the masthead, or not me, I mean, let's face it, it was John's idea, credit John Campia, put the URL to the YouTube channel, send all of those people over there. I think that's uh, fairly, uh, that's fair, right? William Bangs says, John, Lightyear rocks. I have just one quibble, and it's too soon to say more. You can't blame peeps for thinking Toy Story movie with just one toy. Instead, Lightyear equals sci-fi goodness. So let's support this film, Campia Community. Complete the mission and buy the DVD. Okay, William, I was right there with you. I believe, I, I think it's a great sci-fi film, but buy the DVD? What year is this, 2003? Come on, man. Buy the 4K Blu-ray with UHD and Dolby Vision. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. But I agree. I agree, William Bangs. We should support the damn movie. I liked it. Chloe Fanning sends in a tip and says, Just imagine having your own fighter jet minus the weapons. Even if Tom Cruise had never become an actor, he is still the type of person who would have set his bar very high in life. And his Rock of Ages is an underrated musical with great 80s rock. You know what? I would agree with that. I think Tom Cruise, uh, he sets the bar high. He does the work. He's um, an extraordinary human being. So I don't, Chloe, I don't disagree with you. I don't, like you said, he would probably still have a fighter jet, but minus the weapons. I could see that. Um, why not? I don't disagree. Alex Phillips sends in a tip and says, Hi from the UK. A few months ago, I told John and Rob that they inspired me to go into filming. Well, brrr, fast forward three months, and now I have my own filming videography business and have just wrapped filming for a Google advert in London. Love you guys. Alex, Alex, can I just say that Nothing makes us, no, nothing warms the cockles of our dark hearts more than uh, 
that. I mean, the fact that we inspired you to get off your ass and go do something, make something of yourself. Actually, create something from scratch. You conjured it. Not unlike Harry Potter. You made it happen. That, sir, is to be lauded. Congratulations from all of us here at the John Campia Show. Damn it, sir, you took our advice. You made it happen. How cool is that? Alex Phillips goes on to say, hey again, also while I'm here. Regarding the Flash movie, wouldn't the cheapest and safest move to be reshoot the ending of the movie where once Barry gets back to his original timeline, he realizes he looks different, enter a new recast Flash actor? Could be. That's not a bad idea, Alex, but again, you have to go reshoot. Who knows how how much it's going to cost? Although not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Spanky, Spanky says, sends in a tip and says, don't you feel like the same sex kiss that was highly promoted by Disney before Lightyear released had something to do with its underwhelming box office results? How smart is it for movie studios to take political stances? Well, Spanky, I look at it this way. I don't think having a same sex couple kiss is a political stance. I mean, I've been seeing that. I mean, I've, I've often said on my own YouTube channel, I've had LGBTQ friends since I was 13. So it wasn't, you know, unusual to me and in the future as well. Now, of course, we can't get away from the fact that it does promote a certain political agenda. Uh, I don't think that's the problem, though. I think it's brand confusion over Buzz Lightyear himself and the Toy Story franchise. I don't think it's because of that. And, you know, was that political? I don't know necessarily. I think it was just reflecting a reality of our lives, um, at least for me. I mean, you know, but I understand where you're coming from. Totally do and respect it. Jonathan May sends in a tip and says, as a fellow YouTuber, I want you to know that you are an inspiration to me. I know you mean John. That's why I have to look over my shoulder, but I appreciate that. I've been a huge fan of yours since the AMC days with Dennis John Schnepp and company. Well, I can honestly say, now let me just say, Jonathan, the sixth episode of Heroes, AMC's Heroes, before it was Collider Heroes, this guy was on it. I was on it with John Schnepp and John Campia. So I I feel like I might have been partially responsible for your YouTube channel. I know you probably don't remember me, but hey, I was there. But you know what? Kudos to you. For starting your own channel, sticking with it, it's it's a it's a it's a rough job because you have to work your ass off. People think, well, I'm just going to turn a camera on and become a YouTube star. It doesn't work like that. It's quite difficult. Jonathan May goes on to say, "What's more possible, Spider-Man Four with Toby or Morbius Two? It's Morbin time. Come on. I don't think that anyone is clamoring for a Morbius sequel. Maybe he'll show up as part of the Sinister Six or." not don't don't see it happening but hey in the world we live in if they announced morbius 2 i'd be like sure of course absolutely that's exactly what should happen <laughs> it's morbid time i love that that's become a thing um <laughs> also how hilarious was it to see sony make history with having a movie bomb twice at the box office uh what jonathan is referring to they re-released morbius and yes, it bombed twice. I don't know why they did that, but Jonathan, you've given me a chuckle. And Jonathan comes on a, a, a third, a third uh, tip. He says, you're on a desert island. You can only bring one band's discography with you. Which one are you bringing? DC Talk, Skillet, or Family Force 5? Uh, none of those. You know, I and, and to be fair, I don't know their discographies. I, I don't know their deep discographies but i would say just not knowing their discographies i'd say uh family force five because it sounds like a superhero team and you know it'd keep me company if i'm like oh wait it's a uh it's a it's a superhero team it'd make me feel good uh alexis rosales sends in a tip and says hey rob hey as a fellow tokyo drift fan or as we like to call it just the drift uh have you ever noticed that the movie is basically the Karate Kid, but with cars? Oh, yes. 
Uh, not a complaint, just an observation. By the way, did you know that Christopher Nolan is also a Tokyo Drift fan? Well, first of all, it does not surprise me because how great is the Drift? Uh, the Barracuda. It has great music, great drifting, great car stuff. The Yakuza. Han. My God. And Japanese girls in skimpy Sailor Moon outfits who understand how to repair your car. Like, I don't know what's not to love. My God, how great is that? Alexis, you and I park our shuttlecrafts in the same shuttle bay. Absolutely. Thank you so very much for that. My God, anyone who loves the drift is a friend of mine. Guys, Darth we want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Mint Mobile. You know the one with the delightful lads with good Canadian kid Ryan Reynolds? So look, after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just $15 a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't a catch. And guys, that's no joke because for years I've been using one of the major providers and it was fine. But I switched over to Mint Mobile a little while ago. The service has been fantastic. And the big difference is I'm now paying about one third of what I was paying before. And the best part for anybody who just hates their phone bills is that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. Darth Impact says, it's game time, game time, game time, game time. A big D-plus day Wednesday, the finale of Obi-Wan, my new favorite show, Mrs. Marvel. And since I didn't see it in theaters because of work, Doctor Strange 2. I am so ready, as you should be. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. I'm down with game time. I am. Uh, and I hope, I, I mean, I hope you like Obi-Wan. I hope you like, uh, Miss Marvel and, uh, Doctor Strange too. And Darth Impact goes on to say, in y'all's discussions about the Flash movie, I'm in the camp of straight to HBO Max. This whole thing shows just why Warner Brothers Discovery DC is such a dumpster fire. Come on, Zaslov, swing that axe faster. Well, it, it, to be fair, it's a difficult situation. It's still unfolding, but, uh, normally I would, I would Darth impact I would, I would throw in the towel with you i would say you know what you're right uh maybe that's the way i don't know it's a tough call it's a tough call um i don't know what i do to be honest i mean i'd have a hard long conversation with ezra miller because you know as the head of the studio i'd have a cell phone and i'd be like bro what are you doing why are you destroying uh the work the hopes the dreams of so many people why are you doing this <sighs> i don't know Mischievous Gremlin sends in a tip and says, that trailer for Strange Things, episode two, was great. Actually, it's the second part, not episode two, but having running up that hill, playing in the background, just gave me chills. I would say if part two knocked it out of the park, I fully expect the season could surpass season one for me. Mischievous Gremlin, I have to tell you, I watched that trailer like eight times. It's so good. Even if I didn't know what Stranger Things was, I mean, that weird remix of Running Up That Hill, which I bought that album, The Hounds of Love, in 1985. That's how fucking old I am. It's a great record, and my God. I mean, to hear Kate Bush come back from the... Uh, it's amazing. I know. I'll make a deal with... You don't... Actually... Trivia question. Did you know that the original title of that song was A Deal With God and the record company made her change it? That, my friends, is a true story. Anonymous sends in a tip, one of two. Hey, John and crew, 
There is so much coming out this week on Wednesday. You've got Miss Marvel and Obi-Wan, not to mention Umbrella Academy Season 3. On Thursday, I know you're not a fan, but we get the new <laughs> Beavis and Butthead movie. You know what? I kind of want to see it, to be honest. <laughs> I would totally watch a Beavis and Butthead movie, because, like, why not? Like, why wouldn't you do it? I mean... Uh, it, I think it looks, I mean, look, am I wrong? Like, am I wrong to not want, is it is it bad for me to want to see that? It looks kind of good. Uh, two of two. Mischievous Gremlin goes on, I guess he was anonymous, says, On Friday, we get the next episode of The Boys, The Black Phone, and Elvis. It's going to be a crazy week. You know what, Mischievous, mischievous Gremlin, you are correct. It is. It is. And how cool is that? I mean, isn't it great that we're getting so much great entertainment? I love that. I think it's awesome. And um, wow, how cool is that? I think it's it's very, very cool. Love sausage. Love sausage says, uh, I enjoy the boys, but I've slowly realized I must be a pervert. <laughs> is that true? Aren't we all? I mean, isn't that what it means to be human or perverted? Uh, you can't enjoy the boys without being somewhat of a pervert. How else can you have seen... <laughs> How else can you see a penis incursion that explodes or all the gutter fuckery and think, I'll keep watching this. Hashtag milk gas. <laughs> well... <laughs> Uh, love sausage, you're not wrong. And, you know, I knew I was perverted from the time I was a young child, but you're right. I mean, you have to have a, a healthy, you have, <laughs> you have to have a healthy level of perversion to love this show, <laughs> I think. I mean, you know, <laughs> and you're not wrong. You are not wrong. Captain Dr. Hawkeye Pierce sends in a tip and says, even if it slightly, slightly breaks a New Hope canon, I think having Leia rescued by Kenobi as a child brings more resonance to the fact that she later names her son Ben after him. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. I can see that. Um, I just, you know, did they have to? Did they have to do that? I mean, I guess they kind of did. Did they really have to? Like, I don't know. Uh, was that something we did? We really need that in our lives? I mean, I can't say no. But you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I think it's a, a very salient point. And after all, it, it made sense. Cody Hunt Films sends in a tip and says, <laughs> Speaking of Pop-Tarts, I just attended to my family reunion in Pikeville, Kentucky, which also happens to be the town where Kellogg's makes their Pop-Tarts. I drove right past the facility. Laugh out loud. Cody. Cody. Come on, Cody. You have to tell us what's your favorite flavor of Pop-Tart. You can't just say you drove by the factory. You have to tell us, like, do you prefer Pop-Tarts raw dogging or do you like them heated up? And do you like fruity Pop-Tarts or do you like things like chocolate and cinnamon? You have to give us more information. That's what we want to know here. But, that's, first of all, congrats on the family reunion. Hope it was great. But come on, we need to know. The philosophy of Pop-Tarts. That's what we're looking for here. Harry Poppins sends in a tip and said, The missus bought me my first hot toy figure, Infinity War Thor. Oh, bro. Okay. First of all, can we just talk about your missus? You didn't send her name in. Her name could be Karen or Stephanie or Margot or Lisa. I don't know what your wife's name is. But you did say the missus, so I'm assuming she is a woman. But yes, you tell your missus. She could have bought you any hot toy. She got you Infinity War Thor with Mjolnir and Stormbreaker, and you put on the uh, the lightning and light him up. You, you, my friend, the Mrs. Harry Poppins, your Mrs. I mean, she is she is super califragilistic, expialidocious, and you know it, and I know it, and per, I would assume that's why you married her. But you tell her congratulations, and. Um, Oh, she bought you that a few years ago. I've since bought Sam Wilson's Captain America. That's not out yet. You pre-ordered it. Debating on either Moon Knight, Pattinson's The Batman, and White Vision. 
What say you on recommendations? Well, well, all of those are good choices. When it comes to hot toys, here's the thing. You have to decide. You can't be like, I'm going to buy every hot toy. Don't do that. I mean, I would say either collect lines, like get the Infinity War line, or get uh, specific comic lines, like everything Thor or Thor-related or Vision-related. I mean, all, all of those are great choices. White Vision's great. The Pattinson's Batman's great. Moon Knight's great. I can't wait to get Moon Knight. But it really comes down to what do you love? What do you love? And I would go that way because they're so expensive. And what's cool is here's the thing about Hot Toys, and this is this is the danger. You have one, it's cool. But when you start putting one next to another, it suddenly becomes exponentially cooler. And you're like, oh, well, I have a display now. What if I put this guy here and I'm going to get this? And down that road lies madness. I'm just saying, check that out. You're going to love it. Uh, Buy whatever you want. There's so much good stuff coming out. I mean, I have to make sure Elizabeth can hear me. Um, The last hot toy, the thing I have coming is the the Zack Snyder's Justice League 2-pack, Superman, Henry Cavill in the black suit, and Nightmare Batman. But again, don't tell anyone and don't tell Elizabeth because she'll get pissed. She's like, we have to pay rent. Uh, you can't see the top, but running up that hill sends in a tip and says, I, I won't sing it again. That new Stranger Things trailer is fire. But for a moment... I forgot most of what happened in season four. This binging model sucks. I binge to avoid spoilers, but binging makes things forgettable. If it was weekly, this show would be on everyone's mind. Well, you know, running up that hill, that is an ongoing conversation we've had here at the John Campy Show. You're not wrong. Um, I, I don't necessarily think binging is the greatest thing to do. And you're right. It's in one ear and out the other because you binge one thing, then you're on to the next. And I think one of the great um, one of the great things is is look I love I love being f- you can get excited and get enamored of a show and it's it's all great, but like you said you forget because it's in one ear and out the other. I found I'll tell you something interesting. I've been rewatching for all mankind, and while I know where it's going, I find myself enjoying it a lot more. Uh, just delving into it and 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 enjoying the episodes. Because you binge it so quick and then it's done, you don't look at it again. And when you go back a second time, it's almost like you're looking at it for the first time, but it's kind of different. So I'm a big fan of that. I mean, I, I like going back and re-binging. Re- I, I'm on a re-binge of something. You, you add that to your lexicon. We're going to re-binge this, re-binge that, re-binge it all. I'm going to re-binge my life. Um, and that that wraps it up for this uh, this mailbag. First of all, I want to thank Jonathan Voico and and Rayora, who actually weren't here because I'm in the Rob Observatory recording this. But I, you know, if they were here, they'd laugh at my jokes. And I want to thank them anyway. I want to thank John Campia for giving me this opportunity. But most of all, I want to thank you, our constant viewers. That's what Stephen King calls his readers: constant readers. Our constant viewers here at the John Campia Show. Thank you so much for supporting this channel via your tips. And asking great questions or comments or I guess I don't I never see the bad ones. I mean, one day maybe John will let me do the inappropriate mailbag. Because come on, you all know you want to see that. But until then, I want to thank you for supporting the channel in the way you do via super chats and of course during the live show and of course these tips. And if you want to get a question on mailbag and you want me to read it or John to read it or the two of us read it, maybe Chris Carr and I will read it. Who knows? But to hear your name in lights, if we could put lights, we would. Like your names would go, like neon, you hear the, it'd be your name in lights. So think about that, like like Harry Poppins right there, or Anonymous, or Cody Hunt Films. Imagine those names in lights. That's what we do here at the John Campia Mailbag. Thank you very much. My name is Robert Meyer Burnett. You can find me on Instagram at rmburnett. Find me on Twitter at burnettrm. Or find me on my own YouTube channel, The Post Geek Singularity, or postgeeksingularity.com, a great website to engage all of you ruffians. Go there, read some cool articles, feed back to me, send me a letter. I'll read it live on my YouTube show. But from all of us here at The John Campia Show, 
Thank you so very much for sending us in great things to talk about here at the Mailbag. And that is for June 22nd, 2022.